If you had $500 to spend on a ham radio today, what would you actually buy with it? Because this is kind of the price point where things can get a little bit confusing. You can afford good radios here, but you can also make choices that whilst they look sensible on paper, they end up being the wrong fit for how you actually operate. And it's the mistake that most people make. It's not spending too much, it's putting the money into the wrong type of radio. So in this video, I'm not gonna to try to tell you which radio to buy. I'm gonna show you how I think about spending that $500 and why different radios at this price cost what they do. We'll look at handhelds, we'll look at mobiles and HF options. And as we go along, I'll explain what the features actually change in real use, not just what they say on the box. Because once you understand why one radio makes sense for a one person and not another, the decision gets a whole lot easier on what to buy and you're far less likely to regret it later. So let's start with the first thing that really determines where that money should go. So the first thing to work out is where you actually operate most of the time. That's what drives almost every price difference you'll see from here on. If most of your time is spent just on local repeaters, events, or just talking around town, you'll get far more value out of VHF and UHF gear. On the other hand though, if you wanna work interstate or overseas, that pushes you over towards HF. And if you're in the car a lot, or you want a radio that can double as a small base, maybe a mobile radio starts to make sense. So instead of ranking radios from best to worst, we're gonna break this down by category and explain why the prices land where they do in what each option and who they actually suit. Now, just a quick note on pricing. All the prices I mentioned here are in US dollars and they're taken from predominantly DX engineering at the time of filming. There are links below in the description. Prices can change and they do vary by country, but this gives us a consistent baseline to compare these radios properly. So first of all, we're gonna talk about handhelds where a lot of people start out. Handheld radios, they're cheap because they're low power. They're usually around five watts. They're designed to be simple, easy to use. They're great for repeaters, local simplex, community events, portable use, but they're not really magic. Antennas and location matter more than the radio itself, but they are a beginning point. And all of these handhelds featured are two meters and 70 centimeter capable. So the first radio is the Yaesu FT4XR. This is $88.95. This is about as low as I'd go while still calling it a proper ham radio. It's a dual band VHF, UHF, FM handheld. There's no digital modes, no fancy screen, just a solid, simple radio that does the basics well. What makes this a good choice isn't what it has, it's what it doesn't have. There's very little to get lost in. You could turn it on, program it up, and it just works. If you're spending the least amount of money possible, but still want something decent in the hand that doesn't feel like a toy, then this is a very safe choice to make. The Yaesu FT65R. This is a little bit more of a small step up at $109, mostly in build and feel. Functionally, it's still a straightforward FM handheld. You're paying a little bit more for a radio that feels tougher with better buttons and a bit more physical presence. If you like the idea of something a bit more robust, but you don't care about digital or all of those extra features, again, this makes a sensible, simple choice. Now, if you wanna pay a little bit more for durability and flexibility, the VX6R is a well-known radio for being tough, waterproof, compact, and able to be thrown in a bag or used outdoors without much worry. Now it is a little bit more expensive at $229, but it does have very wide receive coverage, which means it can listen to far more than just hand bands. It does make it very versatile if you like having one device that does a lot. Now this is the sort of handheld that people buy once, and they keep for years, even after upgrading to other radios. Stepping it up though to the Yaesu FT5DR, this is $370. This is where handhelds stop feeling like that entry level gear. What you're paying the extra for is for C4FM digital voice support, other features like a color touchscreen, GPS, and a much more modern interface. Now the big thing here is the flexibility. It works well on analog FM, but it also works on digital if your area supports it or if you have a digital hotspot. And it's a radio that you won't outgrow quickly. So if you want one handheld that covers almost everything without jumping to the very top of the price range, then this is probably the sweet spot. 
Remember, though, that with this and also the next radio that we're going to talk about, the learning curve in what it is is a little bit higher. And in this particular radio, having a touchscreen might mean that fat fingers might be an issue if you're used to buttons. Now, the next top-of-the-line radio is the ICOM ID50A. This just comes in at our $500 limit. It is a radio that's all about ecosystem and refinement. It is similar to the FT5DR, but now you're paying for D-Star Digital Voice. You've also got built-in GPS, you've got micro SD storage, and a very polished user experience with more expansive features that you don't sort of see in those budget radios. Now, this isn't a radio that you buy just because it's expensive. It makes sense if D-Star is active in your area or if you want to specifically get on D-Star where you live or if you travel and you want access to linked repeaters and digital networks. If you know that you want digital or the best features and you want it done properly in a handheld, then this is probably where your money goes. Now, just a quick side note, and this matters if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now. A lot of people struggle with radios like this, not because the radios are complicated, but because no one ever explains how everything fits together. That's exactly why I put together the ham radio in 30 days, zero to hero. It is a step-by-step -step course that takes you from getting on the air, through repeaters, HF basics, antennas, and operating, without assuming that you already know all of the jargon. If you're trying to decide what radio actually makes sense for you, then that course will give you the context that makes choices like this much easier. So what I'll do is I'll put a link below now, and we'll move on to mobile radios where power and antennas start to matter a little bit more. So once you move to mobile radios, the price jump is mostly about power and functionality. So a mobile radio is typically 50 watts on high power, sometimes a little bit more, and that changes what's possible, especially with a good external antenna. So with higher power, you also get the ability to run at low power to start off with. So you actually future-proof your purchase if your license level, wherever you're from, only allows using a lower power. So here in Australia, we're allowed 10 watts on the foundation license. If I buy a 50 watt radio, that means I'm future-proofed for if I ever upgrade. Now, mobile radios, they also work extremely well as small little base stations, which is something that a lot of people overlook. The first mobile radio that we're gonna talk about is the Alinco DR06TA. This is $250. And this is a very focused radio, and that's why it's affordable. It's a six meter FM monobander. So just one band, one job. If you have six meters FM repeaters nearby or local six meter activity, this is a very effective way to get on that band without paying for the features that you won't use. However, there is a caveat with this. Six meter activity can be quiet in a lot of areas especially when you compare it to the two meter band. So this radio may not necessarily be a good choice for you, but I am a big fan of six meters and getting more people on it. So the more we invest in it, the better it is. And it's a great band. It has typically more range than two meters and it works very well. So it's a good reminder here that more bands doesn't always mean better. The right bands matter more. Now, moving back to 2 meters and 70 centimeters here for a minute, we're going to have a look at the ICOM IC2730A. This is $280. This is a solid, no nonsense, 2 meter, 70 centimeter dual band analog FM mobile radio. It's got good audio, reliable performance, and a straightforward interface. It also supports dual receive, full duplex receive, which means you can monitor two things at once. This is useful if you're keeping an ear on, say, a repeater while you're listening to something else on another channel. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, with this is that the mounting hardware is optional. So you need to factor that in if you're installing it in a vehicle or if you're using it maybe as a base station radio because that'll add extra cost in. Now, the Yaesu FT3185R ASP, they love these long models, <laughs> model names, $290. This radio is all about power. It's a two meter only radio. So we spoke about the six meter only radio before. This is again, another monobander, but it can put up up to 85 watts out. That extra power can help in some situations, but it's not a substitute for a good antenna. 50 watts into a decent antenna like a Yagi or a vertical up really high. It often beats higher power with a poor antenna. However, 
This radio does make sense if most of your activity is on two meters and you want a strong, simple, and easy radio to use for repeaters or local simplex. Now we start to move a little bit into the top end of the mobile category at this budget. So right underneath our $500 limit is the Yaesu FTM 510DR. What you're paying for here is, again, two meters and 70 centimeters, dual band operation. You get the C4FM digital voice support. You get a large modern display, lots of flexibility, lots of features. And it works well in the car, on a desk, sometimes even if you want to take it portable. If you just want one VHF, UHF radio that does almost everything well and you don't want to upgrade anytime soon, this is a very strong option first up. This may be the radio that you keep in your vehicle for years. Now, HF and base station options. Now, this is where things can narrow very quickly. HF is where budgets get tight very fast because HF radios are more complex they need more filtering. They usually require a larger power supply and a decent antenna to really shine through. That's why the number of new HF radios under $500 is quite small. So the very first one that I can think of straight off the bat is the Zygu G90. Uh, around about $465 at the moment. This is the one of the very few true HF radios that fits near this budget. You get HF coverage, you get a built-in automatic antenna tuner and a compact form factor that works well for portable or small base setups. It's low power at around 20 watts. Most of these HF radios, you're looking at around 100 watts, but this is a lower power one. But again, power isn't everything on HF. A good antenna and operating at the right times can make a bigger difference than raw wattage. So 20 watts is a nice little sweet spot for most people. If you want to get on HF without committing to a large, expensive base station, then this is a realistic starting point. And a lot of people have been very happy with the Zygu G90. Now, there are two radios worth mentioning that break the budget, but they do earn their place in this conversation. Now, the first one is the Yaesu FT891. This is around about $650. Now, this one is interesting because it covers multiple use cases. It's an HF and 6 meter radio. It works as a base station. You could use it as a mobile rig because it comes with a detachable head. You can mount it in the car or as a portable radio. So if you only want to buy one serious radio and have it do several jobs, then often this is where people land. Now, the other radio that we're talking about that's similar is the Yaesu FT710 Field. This is around about $900. Now, this is what comes after that $500 option. It's a full power HF and six meter radio with a modern SDR style interface, modern menu, strong filtering, strong receiver, great noise reduction features that makes HF easier to live with. And the field version keeps things relatively portable. So it works at home or out in the field. Now this is sort of the entry level of premium radios moving up into HF operation. So if you're sitting there with $500, the real decision isn't which radio is best. It's actually where you operate, how you operate, and what you want the radio to grow into, or you know, do you want to upgrade straight away, or do you want this to be a radio that you want for several years and it's going to do everything for you? Once you understand why the prices differ, the right choice usually becomes pretty obvious. So let me know in the comments how you mainly operate, uh, HF, mobile, handheld, what kind of interests you want to do? Do you want to do more portable stuff? Do you want to start operating from the car? Or do you just want a base station radio that's just set and forget? Or are you just happy to talk around town on your handheld? Because that changes what makes sense more than people realize. If you can't afford brand new though, perhaps buying a high quality used radio is a possibility. And you can certainly get a lot of radios around the $500 price point. Now I go through some of the options that are available in this video over here.